There's a word from the Lord. We want to continue in this vein. Uh, turn with me, if you would, to the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 35 through 39. I don't know if the Lord is, uh, I don't know who this is for, but I believe it's for, for all of us. Amen. But uh, it's a reminder. But Romans, chapter 8, verse 35, 39. You know, I found out if you become a parent, you can't tell your children one time that you love them and think it'll last for their entire lives. Amen? But if you love your children, you have to tell them over and over that you love them. You have to tell them uh, how much you love them uh, uh, because the world will be countering that uh, with, with, uh, with false statements and fake news and lies, flat out lies. So likewise, it's, a, it's an honor and a privilege to know that our God tells us over and over that he loves us. And uh, he cares for us. In fact, his son died for us. And so we come now to this text that reminds us uh, of just how, how committed he is to loving us, which shall help us learn to love ourselves, which should help us uh, learn to accept ourselves as God has made us. Amen. Romans chapter 8, verse 35 through 39 again says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sore? As it is, as it is written, for your sake we are, all, we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded, Paul says, that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. God, our Father, with these words before our eyes, ears, and hearts, we ask now for the help of your Holy Spirit to guide us, to guide us into spiritual truth and understanding. We pray, O oh God, that you would Open our eyes, our ears, and our hearts that we would be receptive to your truth. Spirit of the living God, we ask that you would fall fresh among us this day. Pour out a fresh anointing among our hearts, our minds, our bodies, our soul, dear God. For we need a word from on high. So speak, Lord. Speak to us uh, for where we are right now. Speak to us for where you're taking us. Speak to us, O oh Lord, as only you can. God, we pray that you would even give a word to the devil that we're here today declaring that for God we live and for God we shall die. For we shall serve him until we can serve him no more. It's in Jesus' precious and mighty name we pray. And all believe say amen. Amen. Thank God. You may take your seats in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 8 makes it plain verse 37 said yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us for nothing can separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus I want to preach this morning with a thought in mind overdraft protection Overdraft protection. Now, if you're like me, you have had a time in your life when you got, a, back in the day, a phone call or today an email or even now a text message that says in a polite way that your account is overdrawn. It's in the negative. In fact, they've gotten so savvy now that they don't wait till you go in the red. They text you now and say you have a low balance. 
meaning that you are near uh, zero, if not at zero, and you're soon to go in the red. And so I found out that uh, if you go inside the bank and, and, and they try to help you, they, they'll ask, hey, you know, there's something we can do to help prevent you from having an overdraft uh, on your account since you have some funds over here, access to funds over here. Why don't you just set up an overdraft protection so that if you take out too much, it'll cover you. So you never go in the red. And brothers and sisters, I, I've come today to preach with the thought in mind, overdraft protection as it relates to your, you and I and our own self-esteem. We're still in that vein talking about self-esteem because we realize that it, 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 it's important to, for us who are believers to have a good, healthy self-esteem, a high self-esteem in God. Not in self, but in God. We become more like Jesus when we really have a high level of self-esteem and high level of self-confidence. Can you imagine just for a moment if Jesus had low self-esteem? Can you imagine just for a moment if Jesus had a low sense of self-confidence? He would not be able to do what he did. He would not be able to uh, 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 accomplish what he did. And so for you and I here today, I want to encourage you, uh, no matter where your level is, that you desire to have a high self-esteem in God. That you desire to be more like Jesus because when you become more like him in that sense, you can accomplish more. You can endure more. You can uh, persevere more. Uh, you can love more. You can serve more. You can fight more and win more when you have a high self-esteem in God. Uh, 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 I found out um, that those uh, who are in Christ, who are in Christ Jesus, when we uh, uh, walk with him and talk with him, we must understand he's, he died so that we would know who we are. He died so we can live uh, as he lived. He, 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 he gave his life so that we could have life. And we found out from the studies and the reports that people who have low self-esteem are not able to accomplish as much. People who have low self-esteem uh, would, uh, uh, would not endure as much. And what I've come to understand when it comes to a bank account uh, when we all have a bank account with our self-esteem and uh, self-confidence. And some of us are already overdrawn. Amen. <laughs> We're already overdrawn, meaning that we, we have a low balance. And when you have low self-esteem, when you don't have much in that account, any offense... Any trip, trial or tribulation, any challenge will send you into bankruptcy. It will, it will tear you down. It will empty you out because you don't have much in the account. And brothers and sisters, I found out that uh, for those who are not aware, we declare that self-esteem is how you feel about yourself and your opinion of your worth, which determines what you see yourself worthy of and capable of. Your self-esteem determines what you feel worthy of. And if you have low self-esteem, you feel that you're not worthy of anything good. You, don't, you feel like you're not even worthy to be loved. You're not even for, worthy to be, to be saved. But the devil is a liar. God does not want us to have low self-esteem because a low self-esteem person is one who thinks or feels worthless or of little value. A person with low self-esteem is one who feels incapable of doing or having or being what's possible in their lives. So, brothers and sisters, we said before that uh, studies have shown that our young people, our teenagers, by the time they get to 12th grade, a, a survey showed that only 5% of the students by 12th grade had a healthy high self-esteem. Which implies that as they got older, uh, uh, their self-esteem went further and further down uh, as what they thought of themselves and what they thought they were capable of. Low self-esteem people, people with low self-esteem have a very low reserve or a negative balance in either both uh, their self-worth account or their self-confidence account. And that's why it's important for us to understand that we have access to some overdraft protection. 
because you're going to need it. Why? Because all of us, all of us uh, have had experience in, in our lives that have taxed our self-esteem or self-confidence. You see signs of uh, self, low self-esteem. You, well, you might recognize some of these. People with low self-esteem, low self-esteem tend to be, feel insecure. What other people are going to say. Uh, they tend to have a need to please. They can't say no because they don't want anybody to reject them. They want everybody to like them. They, they're afraid of being put, rejected or, or not accepted. And so people with low self-esteem will do stuff that they shouldn't do just to make somebody happy or please somebody who doesn't care about them. People with low self-esteem tend to avoid uh, bringing attention to themselves. For their word, they feel they're not worthy of their attention. They tend to uh, stay in the background because they feel unimportant. People with uh, low self-esteem have signs of emotional dependency and even self-sabotaging the good that's in their lives because they feel they don't deserve what they've already been blessed with. And so, brothers and sisters, as believers in Christ, we've got to come against that because that's not of God, that's of the enemy. Believers' self-confidence must come from our, co our God confidence, not from ourselves, not from this world. We go back to the very beginning in the book of Genesis, and we find that God created the heavens and earth. He created a perfect world for us. But Adam disobeyed God. Eve disobeyed God and were cast out of the garden. And ever since that time, they have been trying to rebuild their self-esteem with stuff, with people, which is why even today people are trying to make more money so they can feel more important. They're trying to get more things so they can feel more, uh, more valuable. They're trying to buy the latest and greatest, drive the newest and shiniest, all because they're trying to build themselves up. But you got to know the devil is a liar. None of that will fill the gap that God has, the hole in our lives that God has placed None of that will really satisfy us uh, on, 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 a, on a truthful level. It will only placate those around us to make others feel or are inclined to feel that we're doing well. But just because you have a lot of good stuff doesn't mean you're having a good life. Amen, somebody. But we spend a whole lot of our time in life trying to uh, 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 show others how good we got it, show others how well we're doing by accumulating things, purchasing things, and buying things to make us look like we're worth something. I found out that uh, all of us have been taxed with our uh, self-esteem, and there uh, 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 are, are ways we can know that, and we know that when our self-esteem is low, we're not going to be who Christ died for. We're not going to be able to live the life. Can you imagine a child, one of your children coming to you and saying, I'm not worth anything. I, 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 don't, I can't do anything. I'm not worth anything. I, uh, everybody's better than me. Everybody, I'm the ugliest. I'm the biggest. I'm the fat. I'm, what, what, you, you would stop them in their tracks. But grown people have that same thought in their heads. We're saying that we're not good enough. We're saying that we're, we're, we're not enough. We're saying to ourselves, nobody else. We're saying it to ourselves because when it comes to self-esteem, it looks like other people control it, but it's really up to us. It's a private account that no one can deposit in or withdraw from except us. Get that. Nobody can deposit. Even if you compliment me, that doesn't deposit into my uh, bank, of a, bank account of self-esteem. Why? Because you can say nice things about me, but if I don't believe it, Amen. If I don't believe it, it's not a deposit. I have to receive it and believe it for it to become a deposit. The same is true if you say something to somebody uh, to insult them. You offend them. Now, if somebody offends me and says something about me, I have, they, they, they can't make a withdrawal from my account either. I have to believe what they said in order for it to be a withdrawal. So when it comes to my account and your account, 
Uh, it's really up to us. Nobody can rob you. Nobody can rob you of your self-esteem. Nobody can build your self-esteem up. And I've tried, I'm telling you, if you ever get with somebody who has low self-esteem and you're on the outside trying to pump them up, you're going to run out of air. You're going to you get tired. You're like, I give up. You're just the most negative, down tired. You're just going to walk away. Why? Because if they don't believe what you're saying, even though it's true, it will not come as a deposit. They will continue to make withdrawals, pouring out as opposed, as opposed to depositing in. They will continue to make withdrawals that they feel less than. And that's why it's important for us to understand some things about low self-esteem because we know that all of us can relate to people who have been impacted. There's some factors that have affected all of us in one way or another uh, that have uh, caused us to make a withdrawal. Uh, abuse. If you've had abuse, and I don't care if it's verbal, physical, sexual, uh, psychological, emotional, if you've been abused at some point in your life, that, that is an attempt to make a withdrawal and it's up to you to make that withdrawal occur. Meaning that something bad can happen to us and we can internalize it and from then on feel unworthy, feel shameful, feel guilty, or we cannot make the withdrawal. We can have a different understanding instead of letting it tr cause us to go uh, uh, overdrawn. We can take that same experience when we know who we are in God and turn that into something that makes us better. What are you saying? I found out uh, some years ago in my uh, uh, corporate life, uh, I had to take doctors out to golf and I first had to learn how to golf and then I had to pay to take them off. Uh, they like they like free stuff. So we had to pay to take them out and wine and dine them. Uh, and, and so I had to learn about golf. And one of the things I learned about the history of golf is when they first started playing golf, the y'all know what a golf ball looks like. It got a little lot of dimples in it. Well, it didn't start out that way. The golf ball started out being smooth and round like a ping pong ball. Smooth and round. But what they found out is that the balls that had been used for a long time had a lot of dings and cuts in it. And those balls went further than the smooth balls. So the guys wanted to play with the old balls that had the dings and cuts because they could hit it further. And so it finally real, dawned on somebody, you know, this aerodynamic thing came into place. And so they start creating the ball with dimples, dings already in it so that it would go farther. And what I've come to understand, all of us have been kicked and cut and bruised, but it doesn't mean you have to have a withdrawal in that. You can take that and make you go higher in the Lord. If you've got God in your life and you know the word of God, that same thing that was supposed to make a withdrawal can cause you to make a deposit. Meaning that you can soar based not based on what you've gone through. It made you better and not bitter. It made you stronger and not weaker. It made you more assured because you came through it and you didn't give up. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Some things we've been through made us better. So the deposit or the withdrawal is up to us, but we know that some of us have had abuse in our lives, and that can be a factor. We, negative parenting can be a factor in our lives of low self-esteem. Amen. Uh, I always say my mother and I are doing the best we can with what we have and what we know at this time. Amen. I tell my children that, hey, uh, we are not the perfect parents because y'all didn't come as perfect children. <laughs> But we know that negative parents can have a significant impact on children's self-esteem. Why? Because that's the one place you ex the child expects to be encouraged. Every child ideally should have a family and a home where they feel loved, they are encouraged, they have affection, they have affirmations, they have encouragement uh, to build up their self-esteem. Because when children are raised in that environment, they do tend to have a healthy self-esteem. But when the children are not raised around loving parents and loving parenting and encouraging parenting and, and uh, affectionate parenting and parents who really uh, support them and affirm them, that can diminish their self-esteem. That can really impact. And I just believe uh, many of us have had parents that we had to say, Lord, forgive them. Thank you for them, but forgive them because they know not <laughs> what they do. <laughs> and we have to say that about ourselves. That they, yeah, they came with instructions but in the Bible, but we hadn't read the whole thing. Some people have been impacted by uh, their self-esteem, have been impacted by negative peers, not the parents, but other people. 
You know, family and friends can say some of the most damaging things. And when they say things that uh, you two, you're going to be big as a house. Look, I'm still wearing baby fat. Right? I'm still, well, you, why would you tell a child that? And so what? Listen, if mom and dad big, there's a good chance we going to be big. Amen. So why are you going to put on, you didn't like it as a child, so why are you going to turn around and put it on the child? But we do that. We do what we didn't like done to us and turn right around and do the same thing. And so not only do our parents say and do things, the people, our peers, students are some of the most, ooh, today in social media, our peers who are negative, who, who call out our flaws, who make us feel less than because we don't have what they have, wear what they wear. Our peers can uh, make us, uh, 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 can, can be a factor in our low self-esteem. Our negative self-talk can do it. All of us have a cassette, a reel-to-reel. Some of y'all don't know what that is, but a reel-to-reel just keep playing and playing. When it gets the other way, it start playing back the other way. The same thing we keep saying to ourselves when something good happens. The same thing we say to ourselves when something bad happens. The same thing we say to ourselves when we look in the mirror. The same thing we say to ourselves when other people look at us. We got to be mindful that low self-esteem can be, can, be, uh, can be impacted by negative self-talk. It's not what they're saying. It's what I'm saying. It's not even what they're saying in my ear. It's what I'm believing what, what they're saying. And that's what determines whether it's a deposit or withdrawal. And we got to realize there are factors, other factors. Unrealistic goals uh, is a major factor of why some people have low self-esteem. Why? Because they they think they got to be perfect to be accepted. They think they got to be skinny to be pretty. They think they have to be light-skinned to be, uh, be attractive. They think they have to have long hair to be beautiful. Unrealistic uh, uh, goals can be one where you, 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 your goal is to be popular so you want everybody to like you. And I'm telling you, I don't, everybody didn't like Jesus. And if you uh, know who he was, you stop trying. Because some people you'll never please. And people with low self-esteem will assure you you'll never please them. Pat. Past bad choices can be a factor in some of our lives. What we did in the past is still playing in our minds. Yeah, I did it, but that's not who I am today. Nobody else is bringing it up but you. You're the only one still reliving it over and over and over. The bad choices you made, the bad decisions you made, the, uh, the consequences you paid for. Uh, 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 many times our past bad choices can haunt us and keep our, low, keep our esteem withdrawn and over overdrawn comparing ourselves to others is another way another factor that can cause us to feel overdrawn and so brothers and sisters what I've come to understand is that when it comes to our uh, self-esteem we got to know who we are in God self-esteem come from your knowing God and it comes from your believing God you got to know God's word and believe God's word in order to counter the lies that the devil keeps putting out. The devil will tell us that we're not worth anything. The devil will tell us we're not good enough. The devil will tell us that we, because we don't have what they have, we're not the same. We're less than. The devil will tell us if I'm not this shape, I'm not as pretty. The devil is a liar and the father of lies. And the only way we can counter his lies is we realize that when you go back to the Garden of Eden, he lied to Adam and Eve. And he's been lying since. And when they believed his lie is when the circumstances changed. When they believed his lie is when it led them to make poor choices, which led them to be kicked out of the Garden of Eden. So for us who are believers, our self-confidence come from our God confidence, knowing God's word and knowing and believing God's word. There are seven biblical reasons why we should have high self-esteem in God. Because it is based on these things. One, you should have high self-esteem in God if you know God and believe God because you know God made you in his image. That is one main reason to know that you're good enough. 
you're, you're, you're worth something valuable. I'm reminded of this man who was uh, out in the country somewhere and, and living in a shack and would come to town. And when he came to town one time, he met a guy who was bringing some wood in and he had some scrap wood that he didn't want. He was just tossing it out. And he asked the guy, can I have that? Uh, how much is that piece of wood? And he said, you can have it. It's, it's junk. It's, it's scrap. The man took the wood home and he carved the wood into an eagle. He carved the wood into a beautiful eagle with his wings spread out. It was a beautiful piece of art. Who knew that there was an eagle in that, in, within that piece of scrap wood? Who knew that that wood was really worth more than scraps? It was the one who saw the good inside. It was the one who saw the eagle inside the, the wood that, that, that saw the value of what it could be. And that's how God looks at us. He, with us, he will always look at us. I don't care if we do the worst things. I don't care who we are. You can never be too good. You can never be good enough for God. You can never do everything right for God. It's not about being perfect with God. Too many of us are trying to be good enough to, uh, uh, to be acceptable to God. God. Listen, Christ died for all of us. He encouraged us to come as we are. He didn't say, get your life together and then come see me. He didn't say, be holy and pure and then come see me. He said, I stand at the door and knock. And if you let me in, I'll come in and sup with you. And so, brothers and sisters, uh, one of the first reasons we should, as believers, uh, have high self-worth and high self-confidence in God is that we were made in his own image and likeness. The second reason is because God loves us. He just demonstrates that love. He expresses that love. The word says there's nothing that can separate us from his love. We should know that, our, uh, that, that God gave his son for us. Is another reason to know that you're worth something because God sees what he planted inside of all of us. We might see a piece of junk or scrap wood when we look in the mirror, but God sees the eagle in all of us. He knows what we're capable of. He knows what he's designed us to become. He knows and we must hear his word and believe his word. Another reason we should uh, have high, uh, have, uh, high self, uh, self-esteem and self-worth in God is because God gave his son for us. He gave his very best. He gave his all on that hill called Calvary. He gave it. For the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only. If you don't feel valued, if you don't feel uh, of worth, if you don't feel confident in God's presence and his word, then you're not believing him. Or you're not knowing his word. He also gave us an inheritance, a, an eternal inheritance. He redeemed us. He adopted us. He gifted us. He blessed us. He did all of this, and none of us should feel less than. None of us should feel that we're not worth anything. We are not the mistakes we make. We are not the, uh, uh, the choices we make. We are not in God. He looks at the wood and always sees the eagle. And he begs us to hear his word. He pleads with us to believe his word. You are more than conquerors. You're more than scrap wood. Your worth is based on who's willing to pay what and what they're willing to pay. And Christ paid it all. So no true Christian should be uh, living in such a way that, that you just don't believe that you're worth something. Brothers and sisters, if you really understand uh, uh, our confidence in, in ourselves must come from our confidence in God and not on the outside the other way, you must understand that uh, there's nothing we can do. Buying cars, buying homes, buying stuff will never. Listen, if that's what pumps you up, then you're in trouble when you don't have it. If your self-worth is on your Coca-Cola shape today, keep living when the, you know, when the leader comes. <laughs> if your self-worth is all into your bank account, Ask somebody who had all their money in that bank that went out of business. We who are believers must always know we are more than conquerors. We must know that there's nothing that can separate us from God. We must know that God loves us. He has, he lo we are the apple of his eye. 
We are his people. We are we are designed by God, made in the image of God and for his purpose and for his glory. Brothers and sisters, the only reason we have low self-esteem and the and, and the study says that 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 only about I think it's like 75 percent of us have low self-esteem. So about 25 percent of us are uh, doing all right. <laughs> but I just believe 100 percent of believers should uh, be ones who are standing in the presence of God, knowing what he said is true and know, and believing what he said to be true. See, our worth is found in God. What he paid for us, how he made us. And so because of God, see, people who have high self-confidence, high self-esteem, when people say things, and, and they will say things, when people do things, and they will do things to, to target and to hurt our self-esteem. But if we know what God says, if we believe what God says, we don't make a deposit, a withdrawal from that. We understand this is not of God. This is, listen, the devil can use anybody to come, come against us. He'll use a loved one to say the most hurtful thing. He'll use a trusted person to say the most demeaning thing. But we who know God must learn how to trans, uh, 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 learn how to keep our balance above zero. We must learn to have increased deposits. Well, how do you pass? How do we have? In, we remind ourselves what saith the Lord. He died for me. That makes me worth something. He gave His Son for me, not just for everybody, but for me. He hung and bled and died for me. He loves me. He created me in his image and likeness. He, brothers and sisters, we have to tell ourselves when the devil tries to tell you you're not worth anything, you've got to speak the word of God in your life. When someone tries to make a withdrawal, you make a deposit instead. You come back with that, but I am more, listen, I am more than, I might not have what you have, but God made me, and he blessed me, and he gifted me, and he's with me, and he's covering me, and because of him, I can face tomorrow. Because of him, I can deal with those arrows. Because of him, I can deal with my trials and tribulations. Because of him, I can get back up. Why? Because my account is always in the positive. I'm always telling God, I know who made me. You made me in your own image and likeness. I I know who died for me. Jesus died on the cross for me. I know who loves me. For God so loved the world. You remind yourself. You are not your mistakes. You know what I learned? I learned this from my own experience. You know when you try to do something and you're not successful at it, after you tried it a number of times, anybody but me have done that? You, 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 you kept trying. You tried a number of ways and you tried for a long time and you still didn't accomplish it. And I found myself, once I wasn't able to accomplish it, I started seeing everything through a lens of failure. Meaning that I started wondering what else I didn't do. What else I didn't accomplish. I forgot about all the things that God had blessed me to accomplish. I stopped looking at all the things that God had brought me through. And that's what we see. That's a trick of the devil. That's why when we do make mistakes, when we do fail, we have to remember what God has already done. If he brought me through that, he can bring me through this. If he got me to accomplish this, he can get me to accomplish that. We must remind ourselves. We must make steady deposits in God, in us. Our confidence in ourselves must come from God. We must remind ourselves, I'm not my failure. Listen, you're not a failure till you stop trying. You're not a failure till you stop trying. And I've learned to table some things. Amen. God has a way of redirecting our attention. I'm not, I, it's not a failure. Listen, it's only a failure half the time with low self-esteem. It's a failure when you don't even try. When you feel that you're not worthy of love, when you feel you're not good enough, I found out that people who have low self-esteem, uh, uh, who try to please everybody, will allow even the most unkind people to treat them any kind of way. People with low self-esteem will let people mistreat them. Why? Because they have low self-esteem and they feel they either deserve it or they're so needy. 
They're so needy of attention. They're so needy of being wanted. They'll take, they, 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 they will take anything from anybody. You let him talk to you like that? You let her talk to you like that? I thought y'all were friends. Oh, she's so stupid. She don't. The devil is a liar. If you're in that kind of toxic relationship, you need to, listen, you need to learn how to uh, make deposits in your life that speak good into your life, that speak God in your life. And some people you have to pull away from because they are making withdrawals and you believe what they're saying. So you've got to pull away from them long enough that you can disbelieve what they're saying. Everybody, listen, everybody around us ain't our friends, as I say. And we've got to learn, brothers and sisters, that, that we must learn to make increase our deposits within ourselves in God. Remind yourself of all that God has enabled you to do. Remind yourself of all that God has blessed you with. Listen, nobody's good at everything, but everybody's gifted in something. You can't beat me being me. So that's one thing I'm better at because God made me. And, and, and the problem we have with so many with low self-esteem, we keep looking at the other person and comparing ourselves to them. And that's how we determine whether or not we are good enough. That's like a grape looking at an orange and say, I'm better than you or I'm not as good as you. No, we're not meant to be the same. Go on and be great. Make some wine. That's your thing. I've got juice. I, let's squeeze me. I'm all about the juice. I'm about breakfast. I'm, I'm about a chaser. <laughs> How y'all know what that means? <laughs> we, we must stop comparing ourselves to folks on TV, to folks in the family, folks in the house. We must stop comparing ourselves to our peers, our friends, our family, and recognize if I'm, God made me an orange with all the dimples and all the juice, however he made me, that's good enough for me. I don't have to be what you be. I don't have to be like you. I was meant to be different. Everybody has a unique fingerprint which says God uniquely gifted all of us. But we keep disliking ourselves, putting down ourselves because we're not what they say. We don't look like them on the magazine cover. We don't look like them on the internet. They don't look like that either, too. You know, the airbrush, we can make y'all, all of us light skin and long hair and so forth. What I'm saying, brothers and sisters, we got to know and believe God in order to have a good account balance in our self-esteem, our self-confidence. We got to know and believe God's word. And we got to start making we got to increase the amount of deposits we make in our lives. We got to spend. Listen, I don't know. It, it's true. They tell you this, and, and I know people think they're crazy. Some of us, uh, and I, I'm a firm believer. I talk to myself a lot. Only when I hear him say, what? <laughs> I get a little nervous. <laughs> but if other people are talking to you and it's getting through, maybe you need to do a lot more talking to you so you can get through with the word of God. They tell all the high performers, talk to themselves. They affirm themselves. They look in the mirror and say what they are and say what they can do. They, they speak to themselves. They turn. <laughs> what funeral was that shit? You can do it, baby. That was Fallon's mom funeral. You can do it, baby. <laughs> she was an encourager. Gail Green was an encourager. You can do it, baby. Whatever he said, you can do it, baby. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, we have got to speak to ourselves. Because we've got to override that tape that's been recorded back in our childhood. We've got to override that tape that's, got to, that's been playing in our heads since we've uh, uh, been divorced. We've got to override that tape that's been playing in our head since somebody insulted us or hurt our feelings year, years ago. We've got to start making more deposits in God. Everything that you're claiming in self-confidence cannot be about the world. It must be in God because God made me this way, because God in, 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 in equipped me this way, because God gifted me this way. And likewise, we got to start stop making so many withdrawals. Listen, if your account is overdrawn or low and you making deposits, but you're making more withdrawals, you're going to still in in the red. The deposits must always outpace the withdrawals. 
So no matter what you say, positive, if you're not dealing with the negatives, you're still going to end up in the red. So we've got to decrease the withdrawals that we make uh, when it comes to our self-esteem. When the enemy says something or when we begin to feel a certain way, we have to speak over that. I heard someone say, I'm just so stupid at times. I'm like, the devil is a liar. We won't even let, that's a curse word in our house. That's profanity in our house. We don't even let our children speak that kind of foolishness over their lives because there's life and death in the tongue. But grown people walking around and saying these things about themselves. So what should the child, I'm so fat. Well, what is, is that building your self-confidence or not? Because if it isn't, then stop making that withdrawal. And start making a deposit. All of this goes back to the garden of Eden. Goes back to the very beginning when Adam and Eve disobeyed God and were kicked out of the garden. And ever since then, they have been trying to camouflage, which a lot of people are doing today, camouflage what they lost through alcohol, through drugs, through materialism. They're trying to make themselves feel more because of what they lost. But only that that can only be found in Christ. That's why Christ came back so that we could have the relationship, that we can have the understanding, we can have the knowledge that returns us to the garden. That we know who we are and we know whose we are. This message is for all of us. I'm going to encourage you and invite you to do this because some of it never comes out aloud. It just comes inside here. For every negative thought you think of yourself, you rebuke it in the name of Jesus and render it void. I'm not doing that anymore to me. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am made in the image of God. He loves me so much that he died for me. And nothing, according to the word, can separate me from his love. And if the Lord God loves me, if the Lord God be for me, it doesn't matter who's against me. It doesn't matter who's, it doesn't matter what your opinion is of me. If God loves me, if Jesus died for me, if God be for me, who can come against me? We've got to speak that over our lives and the lives of our children. Why? Because, Pastor, we need more believers who have good self-esteem and self-confidence. Why? Because they're able to serve more. You know, people don't serve in the church because of low self-esteem. I might not do it right. I might not do it like you do it. I might get embarrassed. I might not know something. So they sit in the pew on what God has blessed them with. And we die, we suffer for it. Because when God blessed you to be here, he knew the eagle that was inside the scrap wood. He was just looking for it to come forward. And so all of us, everyone you see, no matter who you see, and when you look in the mirror for sure, look for the eagle. Look for the image of God. Look for the word of God. Start telling yourself and your children who they are in God, not in the world. I'll never forget, uh, as I close, one of my children came, well, probably all of them, but one of them came home and said, I remember they were younger, and back then, they, all, their, all, all, the stu- all my friends have a, have a mobile phone, Dad, all of them. <laughs> I said, I don't care what they have. <laughs> They don't live in this house. So it doesn't matter what. I said, in fact, you have some things they don't have. You've got two parents in this house. And you can't say that about all your friends. There will always be some people who have what you don't have. And there will always be some things you have that others don't have. But neither one of you are better because you have or don't have. Because whatever we have, we have to know that God gave it. God made it possible. It's because of him. My confidence is in God's confidence. Stand to your feet, church. I'm prayerful and thankful that God is calling the believers 
to come out of the darkness, to come out of, uh, 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 of the darkness of low self-esteem and taking pride to think you're just being humble. Humility is not about low self-esteem. Humility and self-esteem, are n- low self-esteem are not even close to be the same. But in the church, some people think by putting themselves down, they're being humble. And the devil is a liar. We need a generation of raising children to know that it doesn't matter what they have or don't have. It matters who gave them what they do have. God gave them what they do have. And because he did what he did for us, they should always know that their worth is not in what they have, not in what they do, but in what God has already done.